Hello and welcome to my channel. It's Roisin here with another sketchbook full of all my little scribbles for the last couple of months. I hope you enjoy it. If you're like me, you get really sad when you think of all the moments that have come and gone without a trace. Um, happy moments that you love to capture. And photos are brilliant, but they're not quite the same as a sketch. And the amazing thing is, it really doesn't matter whether you're superb sketcher with tons of years of experience behind you or whether you're someone who's just picked up your pens and pencils because the feeling you get when you look at a sketch you've made it's incredible I don't know if it's because you're on record as opposed to um, I don't know passively taking pictures through a camera lens but all the little memories and the little aspects of whatever you did that day they all come flooding back when you look at one of your one of your sketches so today I'm going to share with you my little book of sketches from the last two months and uh, I really hope you enjoy them Here's my little book, February 2024 to April 2024. It's a Hannah Moolah 250 gram, 100% cotton, my favourite. On the front cover, I drew this little pygmy shrew and I drew it on a human hand because I wanted to show how cute they are. But I don't know if the drawing came out very well. Kind of regret doing it. In the month of February, my mum and I both have a birthday and my daughter, Honor. So there are a lot of flowers going around during February. And these are my mum's daffodils and hyacinths. And I was developing this new technique because you get so frustrated doing bouquets of flowers that just come out heavy or whatever. So what you do is you do blobs of colour and then when the blobs of colour are dry, then you add kind of a scribbly line in a pen of your choice. Now, I do like a foodie pen. And I went on to do it with this bunch of lilies. So again, painted the whole bottom half green and left a few white patches for the flowers at the top. Um, kind of wasn't as neat as I could have been. But anyway, that's what I did. And it worked really well. And then you just throw on the black lines for the leaves or whatever colour ink you want. And then I used a Posca pen on top to do the little gypsophila or baby breath or whatever it's called. That was one of my classes in February. And it went down so well. The guys seemed to really love the technique. So I did more. And these flowers were from one of my wonderful students over in the States for my birthday. And I did the same technique, blobs of orange for the apricot coloured roses, blobs of yellow for the sunflowers and blobs of pink for the, I don't know, flowers, roses, whatever they are in the middle. And then when it was dry, I scribbled on a line with a food a pen and ink because a food a pen always gives you such an expressive line. I really like using it. It's great. And one more bouquet of flowers, this time from my wonderful daughter's lovely boyfriend. He sent them over for my birthday. And again, you can see the outline. It's just a blob. And then when it was dry, I scribbled on some lines in, I think it was pink ink. You can see the technique I used for most of these flowers in YouTubes that I made earlier at the time. I'm not sure if this one is up there, but I think it is. These are some hyacinths with some tulips in the background. And I used the same technique blah, 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 in colour, 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 colour. And then when it's dry, and same for the leaves, by the way. And then when it's dry, just to throw on some some ink for the outlines. And I, I like to use an unusual colour ink for flowers. I don't know, just to keep it sort of floral, I guess. Because of all the flowers that I did in the month of February, I called February Floral February. And then I had to think of a corresponding name for the month of March. And one of the students in my class said I could do Meteorological March, which I thought was ideal. So I decided to spend the month of March sort of cloud chasing and wave chasing. And this was the first of such sketches. And you can see the colour runs at the top of the sky because it's so cold at that time of year over on the east coast of Ireland that really... You're out of luck if you want to paint in layers where you expect them to dry each time because they're not going to. However, what you can see is the technique I used for the row of houses along the seafront where they're done in a really scribbly, sketchy way. It worked really, really well. So I've been going through a phase of making these little animal recipes and every time I do one, I don't know, I just really, really enjoy doing it. I've chosen to use native wild animals from around where I live in County Galway because, I don't know, there's something about them, I don't know, 
I just love them. I love thinking about them, just living their lives, getting on with things. And this is a recipe for salmon pasta that I really love. And I've made it loads of times. And I drew a heron because I like herons. I like the way they just stand there. And I like to think of them having their thoughts and wondering about, I don't know, life. But in this one, the heron is thinking about all the fish she's going to cook later on. But I do use my my sketching techniques, the skills that I've learned over the years to make my my illustrations look pretty. Like you can see all the reflections under the salmon and under the heron's legs. Those are all a direct result of all the hours that I've spent watching reflections in real life. You could say the same thing about the water coming out of the sieve and splashing into the into the pot and the way the feathers are a little bit lighter grey when you look at them through the steam. It's all as a result of things I've seen and things I've observed. Most of them I've probably sketched at one stage or another. And these recipes have gone down really well with my students. They just love doing them. And some of them have said it's really opened up creativity in them that they never knew they had, which is why I'm putting a course on to learn how to do exactly this in early June. So get in touch if you want to know more. OK, so March was Meteorological March, but it was also Mutton March because the lambs had just been born in the field next to my home in Galway and I threw on my sketch pocket over my shoulder and off I went to try and draw some sheep in the field. So sketching in the field. But it was difficult because they kept running away. They're very shy. This one was another sketch I did in class where I was once again trying to demonstrate the importance of values. So I did two sketches of salad ingredients basically one in velvet black to show the darks and lights and then I did the same scene in colour to show how the intensity of the colours was a function of values and making them darker and lighter in the correct way and in the correct space yeah I guess they found it useful in early March my family and I flew over to the UK to visit my sister-in-law who was having a big birthday and in this scene, we've got her husband, Mark, who's preparing lamb for the 60 guests who are due to arrive later on in the evening. He was moving around the kitchen and he's kind of like one of those cooks where you can't say, Mark, would you just like stay still there for a minute? You know, because he's creating. So I just had no choice but to draw him twice. I drew him twice um, and that kind of worked OK. Again, it was a class and they really enjoyed it. On the way back through Gatwick Airport, I figured I'd do some sketching of this guy sitting, waiting to board. But I got really into the sketch and then it was time to board. And my family went up to the boarding uh, desk thing, the boarding bit where you get on. And all their flights were on my phone. All the boarding passes were on my phone. And by the time I got on my sketch, for some reason, the guy didn't move till the end either. Maybe he knew being sketched, I don't know. But when I got up to the gate, there were my family staring at me, very, very stony faced indeed. And as you can see, that's my husband and then my daughter Liv and Paddy and then Honor. And Honor's got her arms folded because she doesn't carry bags. She gives them to her dad to carry, which he does without a complaint. Anyway, very angry family that day. In the car on the way home, driving from Dublin to Galway, I really love drawing a sketch while my dear husband Marcel takes the wheel. And it's great because I can just really relax and draw. Now, it's not that relaxing because the motorway keeps twisting and turning. Now, I made an absolute hames of this sketch. I don't know what went wrong, but it's dramatically wrong. As you can see, the traffic on the opposite side of the road is looks like it's in a big ditch and it wasn't. OK, here we have another of the little wild animal sketches. Now, whatever happened with me and this red squirrel, like they do have pointy ears sometimes with tufts on the top, but it doesn't seem to matter how many times I drew this squirrel, this red squirrel. I just didn't get the squirreliness. However, I did like all the little aspects. Again, they're all a function of sketching on location, like the waterfall that you see on the left hand side. And of course, all the little jugs and bottles and so on, they're all drawn with the real objects in mind. Now, I've got this beautiful new electric bike and this day I took it for a spin. I went all the way down to Kinvara on a cycle path. Kinvara is about four miles, something like that from my home. And I sat on the on the quay and I sketched the boats at the low tide and it was absolutely heaven with my beautiful bike parked right next to me. It was lovely and a few 
with teenage girls were making a TikTok video dancing and shrieking and so on. They didn't feel remotely self-conscious. As I listened to them, it occurred to me that teenage girls are kind of like little girls still in that way. And it was it was very sweet. Now, I found myself back in on the east coast of Ireland over the St. Patrick's Day weekend. And I went for a walk up the cliff path and I drew the water crashing against the rocks next to the train tracks. And I, I developed this new technique to capture that look of the sea frothing against the rocks. And it worked really, really well. And I, I have to tell you guys, I did it in class. And the results that my guys came up with, well, they gave me a run for my money. I was so proud of them. Bray Seafront is very close to my parents' home. It's where they walk every day if the weather's OK. And over the St. Patrick's Day weekend, there was a fun fair lining the seafront. And there was this crazy tower with, I don't know, people being swung around at the very, very top, relying fully on the, on the maintenance of the engineering team and their dedication of the uh, carny folk who run the, who run the show. So you wouldn't catch me up there, but I was very impressed with the people who did go up. Lots of nice clouds that day. This is a charcuterie board that I did for my students and it was all very, very lovely and fun to draw. The only problem was that my father's dog nicked the Serrano that you can see between the blue cheese and the bread at the bottom of the board. And I, I was gone out of the room for about two minutes, but she's an opportunistic type of a doggy and she helped herself to the Serrano. Now, as it happens, it wasn't the nicest Serrano I've ever had. In fact, it was pretty tasteless. So that wasn't a disaster. The next day was really sunny. All the mist cleared up and I sat on the beach and I sketched the, the waves coming in, crashing against the seashore. And it was a beautiful sunny day and I was thinking I should go up and get my father to come out um, and in, join me on this lovely sunny day and we walk against along the prom. But I, 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 I didn't because I couldn't tear myself away from, from my sketch. And suddenly my father's dog appeared beside me on the stones and where she is, he's not far away. And there he was behind me, silhouetted against the sun. And we walked together and it was lovely. Now, when I got back to Galway, I drew this redheaded girl. But you can't see her in this sketch because I made a hames of it. It's on the right. You can just about see her through the bars of the door that I drew on top. And I made a hames of it. So I had to redraw this picture. And then I went to a cafe and on the left hand side, you can see all the girls I drew and they're having a good go at someone called Sersha, that blonde girl on the left. My goodness, she's got a real beef with this Sersha person. And there she is talking all about her life choices and how bad they are and how wrong they are. So wait now and I'll read them out to you. What do we have? So I said, don't get a new phone. Bill pay. It's a rip off. So I said to her, oh, my God, if you think I'm paying for that. And then one of her friends wants to sort of chime in and say what a bad person she is. But at the same time, she doesn't want to be too mean. So she says she's obviously got something else going on. And the other one's like, oh, my God, what? So, yeah, they were really giving it socks. Poor old Sersha. No idea who she was to them. Now, I was back in Galway to meet this beautiful girl, a redhead called Madeline. And Madeline had come all the way over from Wales to document redheads. And I did volunteer myself until my sister-in-law said, you don't have red hair. And at first I was like, well, yeah, I do. But then I realised I kind of don't anymore. It's kind of grey and white now. But there you go. That's life. That's what happens. In the background, you can see a couple of guys uh, doing guy things. This is Black Rock Diving Tower down in Salt Hill, where everyone jumps off the tower at the top and into the sea at high tide. It's quite the place to be. Here we have a pygmy shrew cooking stuffed mushrooms. And the only reason I chose mushrooms was because A, I had some in the fridge and B, I read somewhere that shrews love to eat mushrooms. So I thought it was pretty appropriate for the shrew to cook mushrooms. And in this particular recipe, what he's actually done is crumbled up some goat's cheese, chopped up some tomatoes and some garlic and some parsley. And he's oiled the mushrooms, stuffed it with all the cheese and tomato stuff and then put it in the oven and roasted it off until the cheese is bubbly. And it's really nice. But the whole point about doing this was so that I could draw some pygmy shrews because they're the cutest animals in the world. However, I did think of getting one as a pet until I found out that they shriek very loudly, emit a noxious substance that stinks and they bite. And apparently they've got a venomous bite. So I'm definitely not getting a pygmy shrew anytime soon. 
Easter fell early uh, at the end of March and my daughter Liv came home for the weekend and it was lovely. Now she asked me to do her portrait while she was at home and we did spend the entire weekend in front of Selling Sunset pretty much. So I did grab my chance and I drew her with Reuben the Terrier upside down on her lap having a snooze. But there was a lot of telling people don't disturb the dog going on. Another of my little still lives, I was getting really into this charcuterie board type of a deal. And here's a Japanese version with some sushi on it. And it, they're all painted with a brush only. I didn't bother with a pen at all, except to add a little bit of detail, I suppose, after everything had dried. Now, I couldn't resist adding some little kawaii sushi guys, which I've put in at the bottom right hand corner, just because they're cute and they're fun. And I really love drawing them. My husband and I went out for a meal one night and the idea was that I would sketch in Trattoria. But in the end, I realised, well, number one, he was blocking my view. And number two, it wouldn't be very sociable for me to sketch while we were out together. So I did draw when we got home and we were watching the telly and I had the wrong colours with me. I had my little box of colours that have a very limited palette in them. So that's why his skin looks like a slightly strange colour. But that's fun too. It's nice to try and push yourself from time to time. He used to hate being drawn. You kind of couldn't blame him, but these days he doesn't complain at all. It's great. Now, when Liv was over at the Easter weekend, she made lemon brulee, which was divine. And I figured it would make a really good subject for an illustrated recipe. And I chose a blackbird because they've got yellow beaks and yellow eyes. And I thought the black and the yellow would look great together. And so they did. Now, I wish I'd been allowed to call the lem brulee lem with a backwards accent and a knee at the end, kind of like creme brulee. But Liv wasn't having any of it. So that's what the way it was in the end. I really enjoyed the fun aspect and the creativity of drawing and designing a little blackbird and giving a little song because we all know blackbirds sing and giving them some goggles to do the burnt sugar bit on the top of each of the little ramekins at the end. The whole thing was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing the course in June. The type of people who come to my classes are always really fun. So it's going to be great. Now, I've been feeling very stiff of late, I suppose, I'm not getting any younger. So I figured it was high time I got back into yoga and I cleared a space in my studio and I do a little bit of yoga in the morning. If I get to it immediately first thing before I do anything else, then it happens. And it's great. And I feel brilliant afterwards. And I've even been a little bit stiff in all the right places, which is a good sign. I'm pretty sure. Now, I used super granulating colours for this sketch and I love them. They're so soft. There you go. That's the end. I hope you've enjoyed this little sketchbook. So if you're not already a sketcher, take it up. You won't regret it. Like and subscribe for more of the same. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.